is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Southeast. We welcome you to the magical city of Miami, where the Braves have been dominant in beating the Miami Marlins this year. Atlanta's won five of the first six games head-to-head, -head, and they hope to keep that streak rolling. They've got the reigning National League Player of the Week back in the lineup. Freddie Freeman earned that first honor. That was just announced earlier today, and what a week he had with three homers and eight runs batted in. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome to Miami. What a pleasure it is to say that the Atlanta Braves are the hottest team in the National League. They've won five consecutive games, and like the raindrops outside, offense has been coming in deluge-like fashion, as has been outstanding starting pitching, and tonight, Bud Norris has the ball. Yeah, it's been a really good turn through the rotation, and it comes back to Bud Norris tonight, who beat the Marlins here earlier this year. Since Bud's come back from the bullpen, he has been razor sharp. His breaking stuff has been really on edge and hitting corners, but it's his fastball. Everything's been working off a fastball that now ranges up to 94 miles an hour. He's hoping to make it 2-0 against the Marlins here tonight. Here are Bud Norris's numbers for his three June starts. Very impressive work. He'll have to be at his best because the Braves are facing one of the best. And Jose Fernandez, all he is is 23 in one lifetime on his home mound. Not too bad. Actually, over a 33 start period at home, it's the best record in the history of baseball at home. Jose has been really good everywhere, though, not just home, but on the road as well. Fastball that will hop up to around 98 miles an hour, a real good slider, and a good changeup to go with it. He has always pitched well against the Braves. He will be a tough customer tonight. Here are some of those numbers in his career. At home, a 153 ERA, an average of less than one runner per inning pitched, and against Atlanta here, undefeated. Should be a lot of fun. It's Bud Norris and Jose Fernandez in game one of a brief two-game series here in Miami. It's a very big day for the Braves organization. The double-A All-Star game is taking place. We'll have check-ins all evening long. We'll take a peek at what's happening with some of the Braves' future stars tonight as we continue from Miami FLA right after this.
Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Welcome back to game one of a two-game series here in Miami of the Braves versus the Marlins as the Braves try to go for six straight wins. But I do want to take a little break from this game and put some focus on our minor league staff because there are some good things going on down there. That takes us to our Zaxby's indescribably good play. We have two Southern League players of the week. There's Dustin Peterson, been saying that name all year, hit 429, and Rob Whalen, pitcher of the week, only one earned run in 13 innings pitch. And then we also want to remind you the Southern League All-Star game going on tonight. There are four Mississippi Braves represented. Mauricio Cabrera, Williams Astuido, Dustin Peterson, and of course the name everybody knows, Dansby Swanson. We do have a crew out there tonight and are looking forward to bringing you updates throughout the game. So make sure you stay tuned to this broadcast. But for now, we have game one of the Braves versus the Marlins here in Miami with Bud Norris on the mound looking for another great outing for your Atlanta Braves. We have first pitch and starting lineups coming up right after the break. Alex Smith, who was hurt a couple days ago, he has been placed on the 15 day DL with a fractured left thumb. They're assuming he's probably going to be out for about eight to 10 weeks. They did tell me earlier today there has been no surgery done yet. They want to wait a week or two and see how it's healing and then reevaluate from there. And in his place, Emilio Bonifacio has been called up. He is starting in left field tonight and will be batting eighth. I'll set it up to Chip and Joe for first pitch, guys. Okay, Kelsey, thank you very much. That's a real shame about. Malik Smith. He was really playing great baseball for the Braves, figuring things out from the left side, raking against right-handed pitchers, doing such good work on the base pass. That's a that's a big loss for this ball club, especially when you factor in Joe the developmental time that he's going to miss out over this six to right. perhaps ten week period. Yeah, let's hope it's not too long. It, it uh, as my understanding is, it's right on the tip of his thumb. It's that very first knuckle. That he got pinned against the bat and broke the very tip of his thumb. So, how long it takes for that to heal, I guess we're about to find out. Hopefully, it wasn't a bad fracture. So, after an off day yesterday, as we mentioned a moment ago, the Braves enter play tonight with the hottest run of play in the National League. The Braves have won their last five games in a row and start play tonight with 23 wins, 46 losses, and taking on a Marlins club that just won three out of four 
against the Colorado Rockies and a fun matchup tonight with Bud Norris and Jose Fernandez. The Braves have beaten the fish five out of six times. A lot of that damage done because the Marlins couldn't catch the ball. That has not been a problem for them of late. Yelich, Suzuki and Stanton are the Miami outfielders. Prado, Echeverria, Dietrich and Justin Bohr around the horn. Real Muto is their catch and of course Jose Fernandez is on the mound one of the best in the business and a very excitable and talented right handed pitcher and just a kid 23 years old 6'3", 245 born in Cuba raised here in Miami his numbers against the Braves in six starts four and one with a 254 ERA the one loss was at Turner Field so in this ballpark he's three and zero oh with a 315 ERA. He's in his fourth year and was a first round pick back in 2011. His fastball again sits 94 to 98 with a slider and changeup. So Fernandez will face this Atlanta lineup. He is four and one by the way in his career against the Braves. A different look at the top. Jace Peterson will lead off. Jace swinging the bat very well since his recall from Gaudet. In CRT, the player of the week, Freddie Freeman hits third. Mark Cake is fourth. A.J. Pruszynski will bat fifth. Four, make it five left-handed hitters, and then the switch hitting Eric Ibar at the top with Chase Darno in at third base. Bonifacio makes his season debut, and Bud Norris will pitch and bat ninth. What a week for Freddie Freeman. The first time he's won the National League Player of the Week honors. Spectacular numbers. And uh, of all the Braves hitters, he was probably the saddest to see a day off and I say that with tongue firmly planted in cheek right when you're hot you want to play team and individuals but if you're going to have a day off this is the place to have it and we had the right day too because if the day off had been today everybody would have been a little sour it has been a just absolutely miserable weather day in Miami it was raining sideways pretty much all night last night all day today the rain has stopped outside the roof obviously is on and that's a blessing too here in South Florida as we get set for game one of this two game series. Miami at 37 and 33 the Marlins are tied with the Mets in second place in the division. They're five and a half games behind the front running Washington Nationals. So Jace Peterson's ready to go for the Braves. He's hit safely in his eight starts since coming up from Triple A. He's up to 247 for the year. And the first from Fernandez is up and away, and we're underway. Same spot, same call. Two balls, no strikes. That one found a quarter. Jace Peterson's the sixth different Brave to bat first this year. Nick Marcakis, Sender in Ciarte, Malik Smith, Ibar, and Darno have also hit first. He's done a terrific job with his Marlins club. They've had some issues of their own to deal with in the first couple of months. As that one's outside, full count. And walks have not been an issue for this guy. His last four starts, one walk, 40 strikeouts. So even a full count is news. Bouncing ball toward Prado, even with the bag, makes the play and a perfect throw. There's out number one. You might remember Fernandez was skipped in his last start. The Marlins are going to be very cautious with Jose Fernandez's innings limit. They will try to pick and choose opportunities to skip him. If they get a big lead, they'll get him out of the game. They want to keep him around 180 innings for the entire season. And so the schedule worked out very well for Fernandez. He gets to pitch on his home mound after some extra rest. And a strike to enter in Ciarte. Yeah, that's something to factor in, Chip. That's a good point. He hadn't pitched in 10 days. Ground ball to first. Boer's got that. He'll wave off Fernandez. Two ground outs. Again, the Marlins 
really had trouble defensively in the early weeks of the season. They've committed only two errors this month. So their glove work has been much improved and that's helped them climb into a second place tie. And here's Freddie Freeman. If memory serves these two have had some very fun matchups. Uh huh. Fernandez definitely out of the generation X player mold he gets very excited when a strikeout is rung up and he's equally appreciative or in admiration when a man takes him deep. And Freddie's done that once in 15 at bats. Freddie's had four other hits too, five for 15. That was more or less a change up at 90. That's foul at first and the count to Freeman now two balls two strikes no giant shift for Freddie here. Mitch Faria playing up the middle but. Two fielders on each side of the diamond. Far the fewest shifts in the major leagues. And there's that very rare base on balls Joe was talking about. Freeman draws a two out free pass. When the Braves swept the, swept the Marlins here back in April, the only difference in runs was six. They were close games. One, like one was an extra inning game, but just a six run differential in favor of Atlanta. Yep, six was the magic number. Atlanta scored six in each of those three games the first, second, and third victories of the year. After that 0 9 start for Atlanta. And Nick Marcakis has done a lot of damage to the Marlins. He's knocked in eight runs against these guys in six games. Drives that one down the left field line foul. And just like that, it's 0 2. Well, Nito couldn't find it. It dropped behind his back and at his feet. This kid Rio Muto has really established himself as one of the good young catchers in baseball. That went off his glove and right into the face mask of Tom Hallion. But he has thrown out 45% of base stealers. 13 of 29. The one two pitch is well outside it's now a two two count. Couple of deep counts for him here in the first inning. And again it can attribute some of it to. The layoff. He's trying to get his bearings a little bit, maybe for an opportunity for the Braves to take advantage. Nick should get a good pitch to hit here. Freddie's on his way to second as that one's bounced foul. It's interesting. He threw Freeman a 3 2 slider and walked him. And that was a slider. Might have more confidence in that right now than he does his fastball. Mm -hmm. 
Slow roller toward the mound. Tough play at Chavaria. Bare hand throw to first. It's not in time. Marcakis has an infield hit. So the Braves have a two out rally working, and A.J. Pruszynski's coming up. Echevarria an outstanding shortstop as you know by now from all the meetings with the Atlanta Braves. Almost turned that into an out. But again an opportunity. A.J. Brzezinski has not hit well against the Marlins this year but he's had pretty good luck two for four against Fernandez. And this was the spot during that great series with the Mets where the Braves were so productive. They had a yep. lot of two out hits. Mm -hmm. And one here from AJ would be welcome. Two on, two out. And off the plate. Ball one. Jay Pruszynski's hard Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot feature. He's approaching a milestone in doubles. That won't take too long. And that's where he's missing with that fastball. Up and away to the left hand hitters. 24 pitches for Fernandez in the first. Two quick ground outs, but a walk and a single has him in first inning trouble. So, will he get the fastball? Will he get the slider? He's liking his slider more right now. Probably the slider. Down and in. Setting up away. And AJ lined it that way, but Potter was right there, and Persinski can't believe it. He missed a hit by a foot. And Fernandez is out of first inning trouble, but Norris goes to work scoreless. Bud Norris has no trouble tonight. He's got the ball for the fourth time in a starting assignment since his exile to the bullpen, and he has been outstanding. Yeah, he even started this really in the bullpen where he started putting some good numbers together 229 ERA and a sub 200 batting average against him. 31 years old, six feet, 225, his Ford keys to pitching success tonight. Number one, fastball location. It has been excellent over his last three starts and have good counts tonight and the reason for that is this team the Marlins second in the league in batting average 
and they also have struck out the second fewest times of anybody in the National League. They will put the ball in play, and it's better to have them put the ball in play in a pitcher's count. And Bud Norris's first pitch of the night is in for a strike to Ichiro Suzuki. Who's batting 349 and is only 20 hits away from 3,000 now. Ah. Norris quickly ahead, nothing in two. And that's fouled back to the screen. Don Mattingly. Called it a day off yesterday for Christian Yelich and a day off today for Marcelo Zuna. But the luxury is that this guy is hitting almost 400 at home and he's had a great month of June. And he's 42, playing like he's 22 still. He's just a remarkable athlete. That's a sign for get a hit. One ball, two strikes. Suzuki just three out of 14 against the Braves at the plate this year. And there's the June numbers that have him on the cusp of immortality and that 3,000 hit mark. So from 0 and 2 to a full count now. Pass ball location and good counts. That one was a little bit off, and now it's three and two. And your point about strikeouts is well taken, especially with Suzuki. Seven strikeouts, and now eight strikeouts in 130 at bats. Nice comeback for Bud Norris. There's the first out. Suzuki leads things off for Don Mattingly. Martin will hit second, Christian third, Giancarlo fourth. Justin Bohr is their first baseman, JT Realmuto, Derek Dietrich, Danny Echevarria, and Jose Fernandez Knight. Martin really catching it from AJ for catching that line drive. Martin at 321. And he takes the strike. Laced foul into the first row of seats beyond the photographer's well. Wow, there was a guy over there had a glove, and I don't know if he even had time to get his glove up, that fella. But I think he saved everybody. It hit his glove or him somewhere. And somebody else got the ball. How does that work? Did get him got in front of him. <laughs> Here's that hurt. That man, a former athletic trainer, apparently. One ball, two strikes. And up the middle, Prado has the first hit of the game for the Marlins. Martins also had a good month of June. 95 fastball right here from Bud Norris. And through the hole. 340 average this month for Martin. This whole Marlins lineup, even a couple of guys that aren't in the lineup tonight, have had a real good month of June offensively. They're only five and a half games back. Of the Nationals and now tied for second. And they've done this without Giancarlo Stanton doing anything for them. That's got to be encouraging for the Marlins, not to mention D. Gordon suspended for 80 games.
Ground ball towards second and through. Christian Yelich has a hit. And Miami has a threat now, first and second, with one out. Yelich just kills the Braves, doesn't he? He does. Uh, 407 average against Atlanta over his last 16 games, but he had come in just one for his last 11. He did not have a good series in Atlanta. In fact, he remember missed some games. I think he played the last game of that series, nursing his bad back. So good things began to happen when he got back in the lineup on a regular basis too. Well, here's a man we didn't see play against the Braves up in Atlanta, Giancarlo Stanton. You recall he had a sore side, right? And all of a sudden he started to heat up. Stanton went through a slide that's almost unbelievable to imagine as talented a hitter as he is. He had a 27 game stretch where he went 11 for 98 at the plate. With a ton of strikeouts. But he's started to pick up the pace. And a home run in the series with the Rockies. They had plenty of home runs here last night. We're told that. A lot of the adjustments well one of the adjustments he made after that horrible stretch was getting his front foot down a little sooner and to help accentuate that he spread his stance out a little bit too. Two balls no strikes two on and popped up. That's a rafter scraper. And it's an infield fly. Stanton pops out. Two on, two outs now. So a big out for Bud Norris. Now Justin Bohr, the Marlins' first baseman, stands in. Very good luck against Norris. Very good luck in his career against the Braves. He has six lifetime homers against Atlanta. So be careful with this man. Good low ball hitter. Very good low inside hitter. Tried to overcook a breaking ball there to make sure he got it down and in with some good tilt. And wound up losing it. Two balls, no strikes. And that's headed for the stands. Now two and one. And AJ Brzezinski spotted something, wants to talk with Morris about that. Moore was stuck in the Cubs organization behind Anthony Rizzo. Marlins got him as a Rule 5 pick, and he's turned into a terrific slugging infielder for them. Now, two ball, one strike pitch. That missed outside, three and one. Best not to give in here. He's going to be sitting on that fastball, middle in. And Norris lost him. It was low, apparently, and the bases are loaded with two outs. But Norris has had an extra day's rest, too, which is not a bad thing at all. 
And right now his breaking ball is what's missing his slider a little off the mark. John mentioned the great defensive work for JT Real Muto. Factor in those offensive numbers. Talk about a terrific young player. Bases loaded, two outs for him. That was a good breaking ball, strike one. Yeah, he took a little off of that. He's a perfect pitch just like that it's 0 and 2 and Real Muto in a deep hole didn't like the call. Again the, the biggest difference to me for Bud Norris between his first stint as a starter and now is his fastball that was 95 coming out of spring training he wasn't throwing that hard. San Fernandez, a lot of pitches in the opening inning. Let's see if Bud can finish off the Marlins catcher. And it's fouled off. AJ will do it again. Well, Fernandez caught a break when AJ hit a line drive right at Prado to end the inning. Norris just needs if he's going to put it in play just a ground ball hit anywhere at someone. There's the ground ball right to Jace Peterson and his throw to first is in plenty of time. Miami loads the bases with two outs. They can't break through. We head to the second inning. No score. View of the lifestyle down here in Miami, Little Havana. And if you are a cigar smoker, well, it's like Christmas, New Year's, and your birthday all wrapped up into one if you'll pardon the pun. Yes. <laughs> cigar factory, I like that sign. So both Fernandez and Norris had a heavy workload in the first inning. Both had a lot of base runners. Nobody pushed across a run, and we head to the second inning with Ibar, Darno, and Emilio Bonifacio coming up. Eric's coming on at the plate. He's got hits in five of his last six games. So he's average over 200 at 206. And that one rolled out of play. It's 0-2. Uh, 
Out away left side. He's still alive. Nothing in two. I would think Joe is an offense. The Braves ought to feel very confident against Jose Fernandez or anybody after the way they swung the bats against the Mets in New York. And coming from behind in that game against Steven Matz when they were down three to nothing. That was a big confidence boost too. High bars rung up first strike out of the game for the Marlins right hander. And Tom Hyen with that distinctive strike three call. Big hook. Last five starts. One walk nine strikeouts. Darno got hit huh? He did. One walk nine strikeouts one and twelve no walks six strikeouts no walks 14 strikeouts no walks eight strikeouts. So that walk to uh, Freddie Freeman in the first inning a very rare occurrence and looked like it missed Darno everything on Darno except his jersey. And Chase very happy about that. Here's Bonifacio he's a former Marlin. Got a nice hand as he steps in the batter's box as a brave for the first time this year. Paul Bonnie was with Atlanta in 2014. He was one of the final cuts this spring. He was designated for assignment April 2nd. Then the Braves re signed him to a minor league deal April 11th. And he went down and did good work with Gwinnett. Yeah, he's hitting 270 and leading the International League in stolen bases with 23. So a big hole right side for it. As this one slapped toward left. And the count to Emilio is one ball, two strikes. In addition to Rio Muto throwing out base stealers by the handfuls, hands full, he uh, he's had some help from Fernandez too, who's very good at holding runners. Base stealers are just one for six off of him. There's that disappearing slider. That's really been one of his best out pitches. He throws that thing about 35 percent of the time, and he just erased Bonifacio. That's his second strikeout. Spot two down and in. Back foot. And it's hard. A uh, strike for Bud Norris over the inside corner. Bud's got a couple of hits this year, including a triple that I think he may have hit here. Does that I sound right? I think you're right. The Braves were the last team in Major League Baseball to hit a triple. I think Malik Smith hit the first one, and then it might have been Bud Norris that hit the second one. Mm -hmm. One ball, two strikes. Triple for Fernandez. He just struck out the side with a hit batsman thrown in for good measure. His slider is electric. No score. Home second coming up.
23rd. If you're one of the first 20,000 guests at Turner Field, you'll get a Nick Marcakis bobblehead brought to you by Delta Airlines. Get your tickets today at Braves.com slash tickets. And check that out. <laughs> Maybe that's what another giveaway some Marcakis beards. That'd be a great idea. Well, let's do it early in the year when it's a little cool. Yeah. And we've got a great homestand coming up four games with the Mets. Starting on Thursday night. Friday night fireworks of course Saturday's a big Fox game Sunday afternoon at 1 30 then interleague play for the Braves three with the Indians. Then three at Turner Field with the Marlins with a fourth game to be played at Fort Bragg North Carolina that will be televised by ESPN. And we've got seven games on the road right before the All Star break starting July 4th in Philadelphia. So we hope you'll make your plans to join us. Here's Derek Dietrich. Here's another guy the Braves haven't solved very well. Dietrich six for 12 against the Braves this year with a homer and four runs batted in. Tough out. He's batted lead off a lot for these guys. In the absence of D. Gordon. He was involved in one of the weirder plays this year. You might recall in Atlanta he was hit in the head on a foul ball that ricocheted into the Marlins dugout. Shattered. And he's down one ball, two strikes. Now that was late in the last game of the series, and I believe he had to be held it back in Atlanta for observation overnight. Sitting in the dugout, minding his own business. That slider sawed him off. So Dietrich digs back in one ball two strikes. Lost Dietrich, his second walk. This one, a leadoff pass in the second. And that's what got him in his last start. That was against the Reds. He got a no decision in the game. The Braves won nine to eight in extra innings. He went five innings, gave up three hits and three runs, but all three runs scored in the third inning after a leadoff walk. He Other does. than that, he dominated. Does get a little help here with the bottom of the order for Miami. And eighth place hitter, Adani Echevarria. And that's too high. One ball, no strikes. Bonds, of course, the new hitting coach for the Marlins this year. So he's got to be proud of the fact they're second in the league in hitting. One ball, no strikes. And Norris missed again. AJ out for another visit. It hasn't translated though to uh, to runs, and I and I sh I've sold them short. The, the, the top batting average in the league. They're fifth in on base percentage, but they are 11th in runs scored. They are dead last. They've hit into more double plays than any other team. And they are next to last in men left on base. So they're getting on base. 
They're hitting a ton. They're just not scoring. That big boy in right field, I'll bet, has had a lot to do with that. This offense built around Giancarlo Stanton hitting a lot of home runs. But he hasn't done that yet. And Morris has missed the three in a row. The pitcher due next. Three balls, no strikes. In the offseason, the Marlins did all they could to help their offense. They lowered the fences in right center and center field. They brought the fences in. Hasn't paid off for him yet. There's a strike. Maria, another guy who's hit well against the Braves over the last year and a half. Last 19 games, a 349 average against the Braves. Toronto runner goes bouncing ball to third one play and it's to first and Chavaria advances Dietrich into scoring position Fernandez will step in with a man at second and one out nice comeback by Norris there he needed that out no slouch at the plate though got to treat him like a hitter. Has two major league homers. He's knocked in 10 big league runs this year, hitting 174. Good cut. And out of play to the right. Mention the rest that Fernandez got. To pitch on his home mound and against the Braves, the way the schedule works out, it might allow him to pitch in the All Star game. I don't believe he'll pitch the last day of the first half. And with a 9 and 3 record, you figure he'll get strong consideration for the Marlins and for the National League. I know if I'm Terry Collins, I want him pitching for the National League. might want him pitching for the Mets. They're losing to Colorado tonight. Four to one early. No balls, two strikes. Hot shot, base hit left field. Here comes Dietrich to third. They're going to wave it. The throw toward the plate will be cut off. And Fernandez helps himself with an RBI hit. It's one nothing Miami. And I believe he hit a breaking ball. May have been a hanger. His third RBI of the year. He got a hit in the count and then a hanger on the inner third. No stride, quick stroke. So the leadoff walk comes home for the fish. Here's Suzuki. He struck out his first time up and takes a ball low. goes out he's under it he's got it and Fernandez was off and running with the play he forgot how many outs there were and he's doubled off thank you very much Jose Fernandez with an RBI hit the good news the bad news is that base running that helps out Atlanta Miami though takes a one nothing lead as we're off to the third inning.
Ford dealer. And Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. One nothing Miami. We are through two here in South Florida. A lot of Braves fans always make the trek down to Marlins Park, and that youngster's got the best seat in the house. And baseball too. You got it. His night's off to a good start. Let's see if the Braves can extend their good work on our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard tonight. Now the Rangers have a seven-game streak working. Braves next highest with five. I was asking somebody today in the American League about the Rangers and. The the description was unstoppable. Really? They are really good. Chase Peterson goes to work and bounces to Bohr at first. Nice backhanded play and a casual flip to the pitcher covering. And there's one out. Let me make a correction earlier. Colorado's winning in New York, but playing the Yankees, not the Mets tonight. I beg oh. your pardon. Yeah, I think it's Kansas City Correct. playing the Mets. But Terry Collins sure would like to have Jose Fernandez pitching yeah, for right, him. Still, <laughs> even so, even so. So my apologies for that. And he is winning tonight. Mets are up one nothing in the third. There was some talk in the New York papers that they may entertain bringing Jose Reyes back. They are so desperate for offense, and there was talk that Reyes might even play third base if he comes to terms with the Mets. Of course, Reyes. Was a member of the Colorado Rockies, and after the outcome of his domestic abuse situation, was designated for assignment by Colorado. And they're on the hook for the rest of his salary, which is a lot of money. Yes, it is. Ender bounced out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Skipped off the plate. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. And CRT is struck out. That's four for Fernandez. You said that stab by Martin Prado might prove to be a huge play in this game. Huge play because it it let him off the hook in the first inning when he wasn't himself yet. Ball one strike to the National League's player of the week. Freddie Freeman. High fly ball toward Suzuki in center. And he's there. And that retires the side. Three up, three down for Jose Fernandez. Martin Prado leads off the third for the Marlins, who lead one nothing.
time for a look at the T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball. Here are your Major League Baseball Players of the Week. Talked about Freddie tonight and what a good week he had with five doubles and three homers. Also hit for the cycle. Josh Donaldson of the Blue Jays, a 444 average. Four doubles, a triple, three homers, nine RBIs. He's trying to back up what he did last year for Toronto. Reigning a MVP in the American League, Josh Donaldson. As the Jays enter play tonight, they're two and a half off the pace in the American League East. Martin Prado, Christian Yelich, and Giancarlo Stanton are coming up against Bud Norris. And he cashed in a leadoff walk and a pitcher's hit to score the game's only run. And the Marlins don't run very much. Dietrich went on that 3 2 pitch. He doesn't have a stolen base or a caught stealing this year, but he was moving, kept them out of a double play that also set up the RBI hit. Maybe this is a reach, but I would have to think that Don Mattingly deserves some strong consideration for manager of the year if the vote were taken today. Without Dee Gordon, who was the batting champion last year in the league, Gold Glover, Silver Slugger, Stolen Base Leader, All Star, had more hits than anybody else in the major leagues. And Giancarlo Stanton, who's done almost nothing all year for them. Yet here they are, as you said. Five and a half games behind Washington and four games over 500. You know, everybody tells me that Don's guidance is a easygoing, calm hand. Good breaking ball there for the ring up. That he doesn't get all bent out of shape when things aren't going right. Nice, even, steady keel. Good pitch. That was a good pitch. Second strikeout for Norris to get Prado. A tight spin on that. Here's Yelich. Yelich with another hit against the Braves. It was a first inning single. Now, having said that, with Miami, one area where they've got to improve is their play against the division. The Marlins are 12 and 19 this year against the East. A lot of that damage coming at the hands of the Braves. You know, right now, playing as well as they are and only five and a half back, they'd like to have five of those games back against Atlanta, especially the ones here. Swing and a miss. Yelich didn't get that. Back to back strikeouts for Bud Norris. And here's Stanton. Stanton had a stretch of 79 strikeouts and 193 at bats. You can even see his front foot kind of quiver a little bit as he's wanting to stride or get it down in time. Keep an eye on that as this series goes along. Wider base than normal. Got a break there for Bud Norris. One ball, two strikes. Did he go? Not that time. Try to toe tap there. Looked like he was able to hold his swing back. That's bounced to the right side, and Freeman with momentum carries him to the bag. And that takes care of the Marlins in order in the bottom of the third inning. All right, off we go to the fourth. One nothing. Marlins in front.
update on Malik Smith earlier placed on the 15 day DL. I also want to update you on Adonis Garcia who's been fighting some left ankle soreness. He was in the original lineup at third today but he was scratched moving Chase Darno over there. They said that he took some grounders earlier before the game and he just isn't feeling comfortable with lateral movements with fielding those grounders. So they want to give him an extra day to rest. He is available to pinch hit and pinch run. So if they need him in an emergency situation he is available and they hope to have him back here soon. He is still considered to be day to day guys. All right Kelsey thank you very much. Good report. Yeah that's been a hard one to figure out. I'm not sure how or when that occurred to start that bad ankle for Adonis. And it came in a stretch where he was doing everything. He looked like Chipper Jones over there at third base as Tom will have compared him. And was swinging a hot bat too. So maybe Adonis will be back in there tomorrow for the second game of the series. John Gant and left-hander Adam Conley will go to work. First pitch at 12-10. Another chance for Prado diving to his left, scrambles to his feet, and a perfect strike to get Marquez. Two good plays by Martin Prado. The first one cost the Braves at least one run, and it came off the bat of A.J. Prusinski, our Toyota key play. Yeah, first and second in the first inning, and A.J. hit a rocket. Look how far Martin was playing him off the line, and right there to Spirit to end the inning. He can still pick it. AJ Skies one foul. He's behind. Nothing in one. This one's up the middle. Echeverria to his left. Gloves and fires low to first. The four dug it out. Echeverria just four errors at shortstop this year for Miami. Seems to me he made one or two of them in Atlanta too. There's a three error game for the Marlins against the Braves up at Turner Field and they are an excellent defensive ball club. Tied for second in fielding percentage and they've only made 34 errors. Atlanta's made 48 by comparison. Brown ball right side Dietrich to his left and he throws a strike to first and the easy outs are beginning to pile up for Jose Fernandez three up three down in the fourth inning and the heart of the order up for the fish who already lead.
If a picture is worth a thousand words. There you go. Can you salsa? <laughs> I can eat salsa, but that's about it. No. Well, I knew that. No. I've seen that. No. It's that that's a lot <laughs> scarier looking than what we just had on the screen, I can promise you. <laughs> that's our producer Brian Woodrum's favorite club here in Miami. As Justin Bohr leads off the fourth. Bohr walked his first time up and takes outside. But Norris has gotten to an 0 2 count five times and he's thrown strike one to eight of his first 14 hitters. But a leadoff walk, one of Joe's keys tonight, has cost him a run. This one's hammered toward left center field, and it's curling away from Enciarte. It bounces high off the scoreboard, and Bohr into second with a leadoff double. That ball was mashed, and Miami has a man in scoring position with nobody out. Sometimes your best surprises come from unexpected sources. Remember, this team signed Michael Morse a couple of years ago thinking that they could move him from the outfield to play first base and provide them some power that didn't work out and they had taken this guy made a trade to get him from the Cubs not knowing if he was really major league ready or a guy that could step in and help him and boy has he been a nice surprise six lifetime homers for Bohr against the Braves he's also clobbered the Nationals so he's really feasted against the East. Real Muto will try to bring him home and extend a Miami lead. I think this is a scary team, this Marlins club. They will get D. Gordon back in late July. You've got to think Stanton's going to be better than he's been. Stanton's already beginning to climb up. It has been said of the Marlins system, they don't have a lot of top flight talent at triple A or double A but that Jeffrey Loria their owner might be willing to open the pocketbooks and acquire uh, a pitcher or another player who's got a large contract trying to get his team in the playoffs. Well their bullpen appears healthy. They have uh, Dunn back. They have Ellington back. They're Pretty solid down there. One would think they would need to go get an extra starting pitcher. They've got number one taken care of at least for yeah. 180 innings. Is that one in for a strike to the Miami catcher? It's two and two. Marcelo Zuna has the night off. Having a great year. The word is that Harry Bonds has had a bigger influence on him than anyone. Swing and a miss. Nasty slider from Norris. He has four strikeouts. Real Muto can't advance four, and now Dietrich bats. That's a good strikeout right there. Real Muto pretty good at handling the bat, but on that 2 1 pitch, he made a good pitch with a breaking ball that. Real Muto took. If it goes three and one, then he's set up to get a good count to try to hit the ball to the right side. Nice breaking balls. Dietrich, the only man to touch the plate, that came in the second after he walked. And that's popped out of play.
Hendricks done a great job filling in for D Gordon. He's hitting for a high average. He's driving in runs and he's played terrific defensively. He's got a quick bat. I love his setup. Open stance. Sometimes when he comes back to the plate from that open stance, he ties himself up a little bit. But the ball jumps off his bat when he gets the barrel there. One ball, two strikes. Up left side, will Darno have a play? Unfortunately, no. There was just such a pitch, as I was talking about, Chip, where fastball that really did that had the middle of the plate, and and it was up a little bit, but he was still kind of jammed a little bit, still trying to get his hands inside to get the barrel there, even though it wasn't an inside pitch. Bud's trying to take advantage of that. Uh -oh. That changes this whole at bat sequence. Bud's been in control. He's had him fouling off pitches, but now three and two. Got a base open and a right hand hitter up next. See how they play it. Peterson's got it. Runner to third. And that costs Miami a second out. So now you've got the righty righty situation with the pitcher, Jose Fernandez, on deck, but it's the pitcher who has the lone run scoring hit tonight. Looks like the Braves will try to get at Chavaria here. He grounded out to third his first time up. Strike one. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's any bonus putting him on to pitch the other guy. You don't have to force yourself to throw strikes to Echevarria, but at least see if you can get ahead in the count. So far, so good. in 21 runs this year. And now it's 22. Two nothing on a base hit to right. Echeverria brings home Bohr. And the Marlins have put the leadoff man on twice tonight, Joe. Both times they've scored. Yeah, and I know people are at home thinking, why pitch to him when you got the pitcher on deck? But as we've already seen tonight, as we've already described, Fernandez is no out. He's no automatic out. He's a good hitting pitcher. And unfortunately, that one was just. What's the name of that street over on South Beach? Ocean Drive. I think mean, that was right down Ocean oh. Drive, baby. So Echevarria has an RBI hit. Fernandez now leads 2 nothing. I knew you'd know. 
only because Brian Woodland told me not too old to go down there anymore. But I can tell you where the old Miccosukee Canal is, pal, if we need to go there. That's cool. Yeah. Might be over its banks tonight. All the rain we've had down here. And a strike. Freeman have room. He's going to lean in and it's into the Braves dugout, into the stands on a bounce. Jose, Jose was really talking to it, too. I think he got a good pitch to hit, missed it. And there was a little bit of pleading going on for that ball to get out of play. Swing and a miss. And that will retire the side. But one of Joe's four keys tonight is proving to be very accurate. Two leadoff men have reached. Both have scored. And Miami leads by two after four. in Miami and you can see that uh, allowing only one hit he did walk a batter in the first inning Jose Fernandez has the better of it a two to nothing lead but Norris went to four three ball counts in his first eight hitters but he's only gone to one in his last ten game still manageable Braves just got to figure out a way to get to this guy that might be a start but no such luck Suzuki's in a couple of steps. Ichiro makes the play. That's nine in a row retired by Fernandez. Braves have one hit. That was Nick Marcakis' infield single with two outs in the first. And here's Bonifacio. He was the second strikeout victim of Fernandez tonight. Are running into a man that is just unbelievably good here in Miami. Fernandez with a 23 and 1 record on his home mound. Slow roller toward Bohr. Race to the bag. Fernandez got there a quarter step ahead, and he has a long look at Bonifacio. That's the second out. 
this was a terrific off speed pitch. I think it was his change up and had some sink to it. Caused him to top it. Watch this ball go down. And then a foot race ensued. And now he's got Bud Norris who struck out his first time up. 10 up, 10 down for Fernandez with a two run lead. Fernandez doesn't waste any time either, does he? He does not. He's trying to join Zach Greinke, Johnny Cueto, and Steven Strasburg as 10 game winners in the league. Kershaw and Arietta have won 11 games, and he's set down 11 straight. That is his fifth strikeout. Top of the Miami order coming up. to 2017 spring training with Delta Airlines in your Atlanta Braves. Visit braves.com slash Delta Dugout for details. With Joe Simpson and Kelsey Winger, Chip Carey back with you in Miami. It's all Marlins so far tonight. They lead 2-0. RBI hits by Danny Echeverria and Jose Fernandez. And the Marlins right hander has outdueled Bud Norris to this point, allowing the Braves just one hit through five innings of work. And now Bud will go to work with the top of the Marlins order coming up. And it will start with Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro didn't have much playing time when Colorado was in town. He had three at bats in that four game series. And if anybody has benefited from the struggles of Giancarlo Stanton, it's been Suzuki, who's gotten the bulk of the playing time for the fish in right field. to make his way to 3,000 hits. He needs five more to tie Sam Rice for 30th all time in the history of the game. He needs 20 to get to 3,000. And the Braves and Marlins have a four game series starting June 30th. That's in how many games counting tonight? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten games away. He might be closing in. One ball, two strikes. And that missed inside. With or without the 3,000 hits, I believe, to my knowledge, he will be the first Japanese born Hall of Famer. I think you're right.
Each roll stole his 500th career base in late April. There are only eight players in the history of the game with 2,900 or more hits and 500 or more stolen bases. Men like Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, Paul Monitor, Ricky Henderson, Lou Brock. And there's a shot into left center field. That's in for a hit. He's 19 away from 3,000. So Suzuki a line drive to left. That and like a high pitch too. And with every base hit down the stretch that baseball gets thrown to the Marlins dugout for safekeeping. And another leadoff man on for Miami. Yeah, up and away. And even though he's kind of running out of the box as he has always hit he still laced it to center. So a man at first for Martin Prado he's one for two. Missed inside. One ball, no strikes. I think Tim Wallach's been barking at the umpires that Bud Norris is balking. In fact, Bud Norris, before the first pitch to Prado, was staring long and hard in the Marlins' dugout. Somebody shouted something at him. And now Tom Hallions put a stop to that. Ground ball slowly towards short. Ibar's got it. Flipped to second one. Turn to first he is a little late. Boy, that was slick. Got the lead runner with a good play. And well done by Jace not to give up on the double play. He turned it just the same, just in case. Yeah, I don't know what the complaint is. I don't know if they were complaining that he wasn't hesitating, wasn't coming set, or if he was using like a, a bent leg move to try to lure the runner off the base. But I even saw AJ motion to Bud to step off the rubber because he was looking in the dugout to see who it was that was yelling. One and zero for Yelich. He's one for two tonight. Good pitch in a good spot. He's had a couple of good breaking balls, but not the consistent location with it and the consistent bite that he's had over the last three starts. Yelich didn't get that. Yelich with a first inning single. He's now reached base in 20 consecutive games for Miami. And now has a 10 game home hitting streak.
swing and a miss. Big out for Norris to get Yelich to swing and miss for a second time. That's six strikeouts for Bud. And here's Stanton. Boy, those were good back to back pitches to Yelich that had him fooled. And top hand coming off the bat. Good spots for those two sliders. Norris had seven strikeouts in his last start. He's one away from that. And here's a perfect candidate in Stanton. He's 0 for 2. Can't imagine how hard it is to hit a baseball even when you have your mechanics and when you're seeing the ball well when you're doing what Stanton is doing now in the middle of a season. Yeah, it's obvious that that front foot preoccupies everything he's thinking about at the plate. Work on things and you can try to fix some mechanical issues, but you can't be consumed by that when you're actually trying to hit in a game. You still got to get back to seeing it and then swinging. That one all the way to the backstop, and no chance for AJ to get Martin Prado. That's as wild a pitch as you'll see. That was a good one. <laughs> And now a 3 0 pitch coming to Stanton. That might not be a bad play if you could get it to work every time with a runner at third. Center, they green lighted Stanton, but he's going to fly out, and that'll retire the side. No runs, a hit, a man left. We go to the sixth, top of the order coming up for Atlanta. have run into one of the game's best young right handers Jose Fernandez a former rookie of the year a Tommy John surgery survivor and tonight he's trying to chase down his 10th win and only one infield hit and one walk and one hit batsman have blemished his line tonight remember he, he set out uh, a start hadn't pitched in 10 days his first 23 pitches he had more balls than strikes but his last 40 pitches 30 strikes 10 balls. And as we said, he's had terrific work against the Braves, a four and one lifetime mark, three and zero oh here in Miami against the Braves. And you might recall, he and Alex Wood locked up in one of the great pitching matchups of all time. 
he had 14 strikeouts on April 22nd 2014. He matched up with Alex Wood who struck out 11 in that game. It was a one nothing Marlins victory. It's the first time since 1901 that two starters younger than 24 each struck out more than 10 hitters in a game. And the two pitchers that did that were Cincinnati's Noodles Han and long Tom Hughes of the Cubs who struck out 15. Well Noodles had a real loose arm and if I recall he could pitch every three days. So Fernandez up to his old tricks. He's got Jace Peterson to ground out twice. Five strikeouts. He's retired 11 straight. But now a full count for him. Backhanded play, race to the bag, he'll win it. Jason hit the ball hard three times. All on the ground, nothing to show for it. Argyle Arbuckle looked up Fernandez's numbers when he's had six or more days of work, of rest rather. Six or more days of rest. He's had 12 starts in the big leagues. He's eight and one with a 257. Well, that was going to be a question for you earlier in the game. You can understand what the plan is for Miami. They want to take as much care of Jose's arm as they possibly can, skipping him every now and then, backing up his starts. But what is the effect of that extra rest? Well, early on tonight, looked like he was rusty. But overall, those numbers tell you that it doesn't bother him a bit. Well, we already see now that it doesn't after the first inning. That slap toward left. Yelich hardly had to move. He was visibly frustrated in the first inning from lack of command and lack of good results. He wasn't going out and immediately striking out the side in the first inning and lucky to get out of the first with that line drive that A.J. hit. But since then, he's been on track. Freeman walked and Freeman flied out. So he's 0 for 1. And that's low and away. That'll bounce out of the upper deck and into the seats below behind the Miami dugout. We have not seen swings like that from Freddie in about two weeks. No, we haven't. Fernandez's last start was not a good one at Arizona. He lost five to three. That may have been the reason for the skip start. Give him some rest. Six innings, five hits, four runs. Got beat five to three and I believe had the lead in one inning. They jumped up and and bit him. And snapped a personal eight game winning streak for Fernandez, who has another full count, this time to Freddie Freeman. See he might have tipped his hand there, and that's not a bad idea to back off the mound and start over. If you couldn't see the sign because there were too many fingers, you might have tipped it off. Rolled toward first. Boers got it. Easy play at first. 14 up, 14 down for Fernandez. We head to the bottom of the sixth.
here that the Southern League All-Star Game is going on and there are four Mississippi Braves being represented. Wanted to give you a quick update on that. Of course, Dansby Swanson in his first A-B of the game singles up the middle for the first hit of the night. Like I said, scoreless through one and stay with us because we're going to have highlights of that game later in this game. Guys. Hi, right, Kelsey. Thank you very much. It's an exciting time for those Braves farm hands. As Bud Norris gets set for the home sixth. And this is outside to Bohr. One ball, no strikes. Willens Astudillo, Dansby Swanson, Dustin Peterson, and Mauricio Cabrera are named to the South Division All Star roster for the Mississippi Braves. The game's at Trustmark Park, which is the Braves' home field. It's a big honor. And there should have been a fifth on that team, Chris Ellis. But Chris was promoted to Triple A. In fact, he was going to start the game before his promotion to Triple A. I think he'll be okay with that decision yeah. <laughs> to pitch in the Double A All Star game. Although I don't think his first Triple A start was what he envisioned. He had a rough go. Yeah, he did. Yes, sir. Two balls, two strikes. Lucas Harrell is pitching for Gwinnett tonight. They're taking on Indianapolis. Ozzie Albies was two for five. Leo Ruiz had two hits in their game yesterday. This one's hit into the shift. Darno perfectly placed. And he gets four for out number one. We saw earlier tonight Kelsey was talking about the um, players of the week uh, Dustin Peterson player of the week in double A and Rob Whalen yes the pitcher yes uh, was the other pitcher the Braves got from the Mets with John Gant in the deal for uh, Kelly Johnson Kelly and Johnson Uribe. and Uribe last year. So John Gant's coming off a real good start against the Mets. Whalen pitcher of the week in double A. Good stuff. And strike to Real Muto. The Cal Carolina All-Star Games also taking place at the home of the Lake Elsinore Storm out in California. That's the San Diego Padres High A affiliate. Max Povsey and Evan Phillips. We're supposed to attend that game representing the Carolina Mudcats. Rome has five players in the All-Star game. Mike Soroka, Patrick Weigel, Jonathan Morales, Luke Dykstra, and Ray Patrick Didier. That game's played in Lexington, Kentucky. The reason we bring that up is these are all names we hope to hear continue to grow through the system and get to the big leagues in the next couple of years. This one is poked into center field by the Marlins catcher. Real Muto, a one for three night. And he has six hits in his last 16 at bats. Well, it's not always the case, but it's quite often the case when at the All Star break or whatever league you're in, you know, if you've made the All Star team, there's a good chance you might get a promotion. Let's see how it plays out. And at 101 pitches, that's going to be the end of the line for Bud Norris tonight. He goes five and a third, allows two runs. The man at first, Real Muto, belongs to him. The Braves are in the pen, down two.
your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. The Georgia Lottery and Zaxby's Indescribably Good. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. That includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Go to MLB.TV for details. This is Dario Alvarez, who against his old club on Saturday was outstanding even though it was just two thirds of an inning he dominated the Mets and had a strikeout. This will be his third game overall two and two thirds innings no hits or runs two walks six strikeouts of the eight outs he's recorded. And Derek Dietrich will be the first man he faces. Dietrich has walked, grounded out, and scored a run. 2 0 Miami. The Marlins have seven hits. And Dietrich almost got plucked. One ball, one strike. There's a slingshot breaking ball over the corner. It's one, two. Very quietly, the Braves' bullpen has very good work. They've struck out 246 hitters. That's the third highest total of strikeouts in the majors and second. Most in the National League. And Alvarez just added to that total on a check swing. Two outs. Yeah, Dietrich knew it too. He was hoping for a reprieve. But this arm angle that Dario has and his breaking ball is making it awfully tough on left handers to get good swings at him. See there that Dietrich's hind pockets weren't exactly into that. So two outs. And here's Echeverria. Echeverria is one for two with an RBI single. And that caught the outside edge. Safe to say that Dario broke in with a bang for the Braves. He pitched two innings on June 15th. That was the 13 inning comeback win for Atlanta. And he struck out five men in those two innings. I mean, he was not bringing it. I love the way he kind of recoils after every fastball he throws. That one off AJ's glove. And into second goes Real Muto. That was going to be a slider, but got away from him. Two runs here in the ball game. Three runs against Fernandez and the way he's pitching. I don't know. Strike three right down Broadway. Echeverria took it, and Alvarez comes on with a couple of more strikeouts. Real Muto left stranded at second base. We go to the seventh. Nick Markakis will lead off for the Braves, who are down only two.
people who are going above and beyond to inspire those around them during Community Heroes Week August 16th through the 19th. Each day a different honoree will receive a special VIP experience. Go to Braves.com slash inspire to nominate that inspirational person. To the seventh we go. Two nothing Miami. Nick Markakis will lead off. He is the only Brave with a hit tonight. That came in the first inning with two outs. Since then it has been complete domination by Jose Fernandez. He set down 14 straight. A walk and a hit batsman are the only other Atlanta runners. And again the first inning walk was highly unusual. Can't really count on any of any of that happening this late in the ball game but all of a sudden it's three and one. Need a base runner and a long ball and we're back in business. A.J. Brzezinski's on deck. And Fernandez had come in with a three start streak without a base on balls. Would Braves be fortunate enough to earn a second one. We'll have to wait another pitch to find out. Three and two to Marcakis. The second walk. There's a leadoff pass, and the Braves are in business. Got to go back to May 15th to find a game where he walked more than two, and that was as many as two, and that was a three walk game at Washington. Won that game five to one. And AJ wasn't even going to think about swinging at that pitch. The bat rested on his left shoulder. And Fernandez missed outside. Key at bat in the game came in the first. AJ lined out to Martin Prado with two men on. And he took a shot at left again. This one, though, slicing into a crowd of 19,961. Well, one of the things I think that helped Nick and his at bat was. After the first strike was called he complained about it and he kind of took his time getting him back in the box and he was like throwing his pace off throwing Fernandez pace off kind of not letting him get in that quick pitch rhythm. You can get in his head a little bit. And he can get. A little emotional I'll say if he thinks there's gamesmanship going on. Well who better to agitate than the man in the batter's box perfect. We might be seeing it right now. Fernandez trying to throw that one right through his catcher, and he's behind three and one. Ground ball slowly towards second. Dietrich to second one. Echeverria to first. It's late. Miami gets the lead runner. Pierzynski at first with one out. Perry Hill is an outstanding infielder coach and first base coach for the Marlins. And he's worked tirelessly with Dietrich to make him a better defensive player. The Marlins have been very pleased with Dietrich's defense in addition to his offense in the absence. Of D. Gordon. Thank you. 
Out of sight, out of mind. Back in late July, you said? July 29th, I believe, the first day he'd be eligible after serving the 80 game suspension for PEDs. And that's the good news for Miami. If they were to get to the playoffs, he's ineligible. He would not be able to play. Is that right? So they'd have to readjust should they make postseason play. Bars 0 for 2 with a strikeout tonight. It's been a while since Fernandez has been in the stretch. Sometimes that affects a pitcher. He's a little out of sorts here in the seventh. This time he worked out of the stretch was inning number two. Pitchers due up first in the home seventh. Interesting choice, perhaps, for Don Mattingly to make. Two balls, two strikes. And that's golf down the right field line and out of play. That might be the slowest pitch he's thrown all night. A slow breaking ball at 84 that. Ibar was able to get to and golf as you said down the line. Downstairs it's a full count. He's thrown a lot of two seamers like that tonight and certainly he's been effective. When he had set down 14 in a row, but not the 97 98 that we expected. Pull the string there, and Ibar didn't get it. That's his sixth strikeout. And two are out here in the top of the seventh inning. Hope you'll join us after the game for Braves Live, presented by Xfinity. Kelsey will head to the Braves locker room. She'll chat with Braves manager Brian Snitker. We'll hear from the Braves clubhouse as well all on Braves live after game one of this brief two game series. So a big second out brings up Chase Darno. He's been hit by a pitch and he's fly to center. No pitch. Now Jason, just, I don't know if Jason actually picked his head up yet after getting in the box. That was also close to being a balk. And probably should have been. Fernandez at 97 pitches. That pitch count ratcheted up by seven full counts in the game. Only two walks, six strikeouts. And quickly ahead of Darno, nothing and two. Braves have gotten one man to second base tonight. That was Freddie Freeman in the opening inning. And he almost balked right there. Stumbled as he stepped off the rubber. Seven strikeouts for Fernandez. He's not yet to 100 pitches, but he is to the seventh inning stretch, and he leads 2 0 in game one.
Cars. Right stuff, low price every day. 2-0 Miami. They come up for the bottom of inning number seven. Parents, what better way to spend the summer than by taking your kids to Turner Field for free? The Braves and Chick-fil-A are now offering two free tickets to any remaining home game for all members of the Braves Kids Club. Visit Braves.com slash kids today to take advantage of this great deal and to find out how to enroll your child in the Braves Kids Club. It's free and it's a lot of fun. Braves tonight are feeling like the Mets did the other day when Julio Tehran pitched. Jose Fernandez has gone seven innings with seven strikeouts, allowing only one hit. And he will be taken down at, I believe, 99 pitches. And Marcelo Zuna is going to grab a bat and come on and pinch hit. Boy, well, was Fernandez as good as advertised again on his home mound. He's in line to win his 24th game in 25 decisions here in Miami. And feeling comfortable, Don Mattingly feeling comfortable with his bullpen kind of restocked. That he can take Fernandez out of the game now at the 99 or 100 pitch mark, whatever it is, and still be able to finish this game off with a 2 0 lead. We'll see how it plays out. This guy having a great year, fourth in the league in hitting. And that's why they brought in Barry Bonds to work with a lot of these young hitters Stanton and Yelich and Ozuna. And there are a lot of teams that have inquired about Yelich and Ozuna. Marlins would prefer not to move either one of them. This one's grounded foul at third. Gosh, don't they already have Yelich signed to a real friendly contract of sorts? Yeah, I can't remember how long and how much, but they did sign him, I think, last year. I, mean, I think it was a pretty good contract from the player's standpoint, but it takes all the arbitration and free agent first year of free agency out. Through 2021. Yeah. Yelich is signed. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Alvarez. That's three hitters faced, three hitters fanned. And a good start to the seventh. Go Dario. Ichiro Suzuki has a one for three night. The single came in the fifth inning. He's now 19 hits away from 3,000. Trying to end a bit of misery against the Braves as Suzuki brushed back with that pitch. Three balls, no strikes. Braves have beaten them five out of six to start the year. Suzuki lays the bat down gently along the first base line and makes his way to first with a one out walk. I'm not sure I understand that. Uh, he's dealing. He's making left handers look awful with that slider away. And he was constantly pounding Suzuki inside. I don't get it. Until it, he proved he could he actually reach that breaking ball I'd keep throwing it to him. Well he won't have a chance to pitch to Martin Prado. Brian Snitker heads deeper into his bullpen. He'll make a pitching change here. It's 2 nothing Miami.
begins at 11:30 Eastern on Fox Sports Southeast. If you can't catch it on TV, no worries. You can stream Braves games on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go, a free app available through your app store. Just download, log in, and watch the Braves wherever you go. Presented by Circle K, home of the world famous Polar Pop Cup. The old PPC. You got it. Alexio Gondos, the third hurler for the Braves. Nora started five and a third inning, seven hits, two runs, and six strikeouts. Alvarez, an inning plus three strikeouts and a walk. And now Ogando versus Prado, and then Christian Yelich. Alexi Ogando has allowed five runs. Those are the only, I should say, five runs since May 16th. And that covers 17 appearances. So he's been awfully consistent and awfully good. It's out of play foul. about Alexi is he can pitch more than one inning if you need him to. So we'll see how Snit plays it here over the final couple of innings. Prado one for three with a single that came in the first inning. He struck out and he's grounded into a force play. One thing's for sure they're all well rested. Nobody had to pitch Sunday and nobody worked Monday. Straight back by Martin. It's nothing and two. Speaking of tomorrow's game, John Gant against Adam Conley for Miami. We're back home to start a long homestand. Nothing in two for Prado. And taken low, a ball on two strikes. If the Braves are going to come back, they'll have to come back against the Marlins bullpen. Got a better chance there than the other guy. Yeah. Ben's been rolling as Joe mentioned earlier. Pitch to Prado is out of play foul. It's one and two. It wasn't that he had a bad May. He kind of rallied near the end of the month to kind of salvage that 270 average. But anytime everybody, anybody looks at a month of Martins and he only hit 270, that's the way it's construed. Ground ball to second, might be two. There's one, there's two. Prado and the Marlins hit into a lot of double plays. That helps bail out Atlanta. And we are off to the eighth. The fate of the game rests in the arms of the Marlins bullpen and the Braves bats.
for that update from Pearl, Mississippi. Here's David Phelps. He's been a busy man out of the Marlins bullpen. This is his 36th outing. And while he's had very good luck against the rest of the league, the Braves have whacked him around. He's given up four earned runs, five hits in three innings of relief work against the Braves this year. Well, anytime you're four and four already, you've gotten eight decisions out of the bullpen. You're in a lot of tight ball games, and he's in one here tonight. More than a strikeout per inning pitched and a sub 200 average, but not against Atlanta. A lot of decisions, a lot of games. 36 appearances, tied for the fifth most in baseball, fourth among all relievers in innings, fifth among National Leaguers in strikeouts, and seventh overall in that category. So let's see if he's a little wild to start things off in the eighth. Braves have Bonifacio and Adonis Garcia's grabbed the bat. He's on deck, and then we'll head to the top of the order in Jace Peterson. And as Joe said, you might have a better shot against the Marlins relief corps than you did against Jose Fernandez, who was brilliant through seven innings of one hit ball. Yeah, they can't be any better than he was. Phelps throws hard, mid 90s, throws a lot of cutters, has a curve ball. Found the mark on the inside corner, two and one. Sharply hit up the middle, a base hit. Lead off single for Bonifacio, his first of the year as a Brave. And just like that, Atlanta's doubled its hit total, and the tying run will come to the plate. So welcome back Bonifacio. Solid leadoff single. As Kelsey reported earlier today on Braves Live, Adonis was in the original starting lineup for the Braves, but that ankle still troublesome as far as the lateral movements concerned. She reported he could pinch it. Well, here he is with a chance to tie it up. And he took a fastball. Donus has four hits against Miami pitching this year in five games. He's knocked in three runs. Swing and a miss. Garcia's down on strikes. And it's one on, one out. And Jace Peterson's coming up. That was just old hardball right there. Very aggressive with his fastball. Threw it right by him. He's trying to extend his eight game hitting streak as a starter. There's a pinch hit appearance thrown in there for good measure, so that's why we put that asterisk in there. Eight games as a starter since coming up. Tonight, though, he's 0 for 3. Swing and a high fly ball belted deep right field. Jace Peterson's tied the game. Hard hit balls he had earlier tonight came back to him right there. I believe this is where he hit his first big league homer, and it was a grand slam. And another big one right there.
Fastball up and it got tomahawked. And the Braves bench loves that. The Braves have tied it up late. They've punished Phelps again. No decision for Jose Fernandez, but Norris off the hook. And now it's a battle of the bullpens. Ender Inciarte, the batter, he's 0 for 3. And the Marlins have to be thinking, what in the world do we have to do to put away the Braves? They have not been able to do it much this year. And that's inside. They've so beaten them five out of six times. They have always swung the bats well in this ballpark. The Braves have won 28 of 40 games head to head here at Marlins Park. That was just the second home run allowed by Phelps. Which had been so good, they'd given up six earned runs in their last 11 games. Two by Phelps has blown the lead. And that one shot into center field, and the Braves are all over David Phelps again. Two runs on three hits in the inning, and now Freddie Freeman's coming up. You know how hot he has been. They're just pawing around on the bullpen mounds in right field for Miami. And now it's Freeman versus Phelps it would appear. With one on two in and only one out. Juan Avis is the pitching coach out to talk to Phelps. Freddie Freeman two for four against him. Well, you'd think this would be a perfect spot for Mike Dunn, but he pitched yesterday against Colorado, pitched on the 18th as well against the Rockies. He is the only left-hander they have in their bullpen. Right. So it's Freeman versus Phelps. Outfield very deep. Freeman 0 for 2 with a walk. Chase Peterson's first homer of the year. Ties it up. Now it's Ciarte's at first. I mean that was a lightning bolt that turned this game around. Again, if you just joined us, Real Muto, the catcher, terrific arm, throwing at base runners, 45%. Got to get a good lead and a good jump if you're going to go. Freddie tries to dump one into shallow left. It's going to hang up. Yelich on the run is going to get there. It's going to be a double play as Enciarte's all the way around second. The ball hits him on the relay, and now they tag him out. So Freeman with a bloop into left. Yelich made a terrific catch, and Enciarte is doubled up to send us to the bottom of the eighth inning. But the Braves have new life. Jake Peterson hit a letter high fastball into the seats in right. It's a 2 2 game.
run homer ties our game here in the eighth. Fans flow right is coming to Turner Field Saturday June 25th. It's a free post game concert all part of the Coca Cola and Delta Airlines summer concert series. Don't miss it. Get your tickets online at Braves.com slash concerts. Hunter Cervenka is on for Atlanta. Yelich Stanton and Bohr are the first three hitters for Miami in the eighth. And you saw that 140 average against left handers Hunter done a great job against them. Screen foul. It's an even count. Yelich more than holds his own against left handed pitchers. He's a tough out. He's a 288 hitter against them. Always a good idea to get the leadoff man. As that one is off AJ's glove and back to the backstop. And the count now two and one. Just off the corner. And Yellow turns a lead off walk. And he takes a page out of the Suzuki book, gently lays his bat down in the batter's box. And the Marlins have the go-ahead run aboard in front of Stanton. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Man, oh man. He's had the leadoff man on now four times in the game. Two of those four have scored. This time it's an eighth inning walk. And now Stanton versus Cervenka. Same thing we said about Freddie Freeman when he was struggling before that final game in San Diego. Somebody's going to pay with regards to Stanton. You hope it's not the Braves here in Miami or next week back in Atlanta. That's what's so painful about a leadoff walk after you tie the game in a, in a tough ball game with this guy coming up. No matter how bad it's been, you don't want him up there with men on base. And he's not wearing the face shield. With First time tonight. The left hander on the mound. Interesting. He was wearing it with the right handers on the mound. Maybe he sees the ball better with the lefties. And doesn't need it. We'll have to ask. Back our way, and it's still one and two.
Swing and a miss. Stanton is down on strikes. Giancarlo 0 for 4 tonight. One on, one out. Good pitch, but watch his front foot. That pitch is maybe eight, ten feet from home plate by the time his foot got down, and that's too late. And that breaking ball ate him up. How do you fix that? Uh, well, I think they've been trying by just trying to get him to spread out and not take a stride. Just kind of lift his heel up and put it back down, but that's not working. His hands are actually trying to start forward and his foot's not even down. So Cervenka issues a leadoff walk then strikes out Stanton. The Braves go to the pen still tied at two. Mazda, Georgia Power, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. 2 2 our score. Good ball game in Miami tonight. The Braves with a two-run homer in the top of the inning. Tied it up. And a no decision for Jose Fernandez with Chris Johnson announced as a pinch hitter for Justin Bohr. The Braves go to Chris Withrow, who will try to retire Johnson with one on and one man out. Ten walks and 16 innings that's something that Chris will try to cut down on because his numbers have been good since he came back. From uh, from the DL. Another area where the Marlins have been very good is their bench they have gotten a lot of great work in pinch hit situations they have 25 pinch hits as a team. Chris Johnson has five of them. He's five out of 18 with two pitch hit homers. And a strike to the former Brave, Chris Johnson, who's batting 238 for the year. He's a candidate for two. He's hit to four double plays and 105 at bats. Almost hit him. One ball, one strike. And let me correct myself. I said DL. He was actually optioned to Gwinnett and then brought back. And his numbers have been much improved. He was leaning. Yelich, a good lead at first with one out, not going. And the pitch popped off the knuckles out of play. It's one and two.
Mets are winning over Kansas City 2 1 tonight in the eighth. Cardinals 4, Cubs 3, sixth inning at Wrigley. Giants 10 1 over the Pirates, who have just fallen apart. Sure have. And later tonight, Washington visits the Dodgers. Tanner Roark versus Scott Kazmir. Steven Strasburg couldn't go last night. Clayton Kershaw won it. Pitch. Little tapper out in front of the plate. AJ is going to grab it a bare hand, and the throw to first is in time. Yelich to second with two outs. And Real Muto, the catcher, is coming up. A productive out, but the second out nonetheless. And here's Real Muto, who's one for three. Chris Johnson gave him a little scouting report as he went by Real Muto. This kind of guy that kind of worries you a little bit this stage of the ball game because he's a solid contact guy. He's willing to hit the ball the other way and take a single to try to get the lead. Yelich has good speed. Rubs outfield is pretty shallow for him too. I think it's safe to say the best arm is in Ciarte in center. Yeah, Bonifacio's got a good arm too. In left. And he looks to be the deepest of the three in left. One ball, no strikes. Popped him up. Shallow right center and Ciarte is there and the side is retired. The Braves work around a leadoff walk in the eighth. Mick Markakis leads off the ninth. Atlanta two, Miami two. It looked awfully bleak with Jose Fernandez on the mound. Seven innings of one hit shutout ball, and then Jace Peterson connected off a of Marlins reliever. High fastball. And I mean, ripped it. Up there above the Marlins bullpen, his first homer of the year, and a big one. Off David Phelps, who has struggled against Atlanta, but the man pitching now for Miami has not. He's their closer, A.J. Ramos, who's having a terrific season. 22 saves in 22 opportunities. That is a Marlins club record. It's not a save situation, obviously, but he's going to try to shut down Atlanta in the ninth and get his bats in play in hopes of a Miami win in their last at bat. Now he's tied for the major league lead in saves as Chris Johnson takes over at first. Stated he has converted. His last 31 saves dating back to last September. So it's Ramos versus Markakis, Kerzinski, and Ibar. Until the fateful eighth, Nick Markakis had the only Atlanta hit. It was a first inning infield single. 
then walked in the seventh inning and was stranded. Phelps came on and surrendered three hits. So Ramos, the third Marlins pitcher, and a 1 0 pitch. Fastball slider change up for Ramos. His fastball 92 to 95. Gone three and zero. took over as the Marlins closer from Steve Ciszek last year and has not looked back. Marquez turns and lines one to first and Chris Johnson leaps to make the grab. Chris a former third baseman well playing first against a lefty hitter is the reverse hot corner and he made a good play. Well two good plays on two hard hit balls by the corner infielders tonight for the Marlins Prado saving a run on a line drive hit at him in the first. So almost recovered from a 3 0 count to get the first out of the inning. A.J. Brzezinski the batter. Looking for his first hit of the night. Up in case the Braves take the lead here. There's a fly ball hit well toward left, but a big ballpark. AJ hit it a long way the other way, but he's retired for the second out. Eric Ibar. When we get to the bottom of the ninth inning, Miami will have the bottom of its order coming up. Let's see what Ibar can do here with two outs. Stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, 94 to 86 on the difference. Saves in that four game series for Miami. Four strikeouts covering two innings. He's got the first two Braves here in the ninth. And a slow roller toward first. Chris Johnson's got it. And we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Dietrich, Echeverria, and then we'll see for Miami. It's a 2 2 game at Marlins Park.
decision but he's still on the bench trying to cheer his teammates on including his closer A.J. Ramos. One thing about that kid is he loves being a major leaguer and win lose or draw he understands how fortunate he is to be in the States and to be playing in the major leagues. He'll look on as Derek Dietrich leads off the bottom of the ninth inning. Chris Withrow's back out there for the Braves. He got two outs in the home eighth. And a swing and a miss to the Miami second baseman, Derek Dietrich, who walked and scored the first run of the game off Bud Norris back in the second. Clock in Miami. Chip and Joe with you from Marlins Park. Miami led 2 0 until the eighth. Jace Peterson homer to tie it, and that's where we stand in the ninth. Ah! And strike three outside corner. Dietrich carved up on three pitches. Good start for what throw here. Borderline pitch too close to take. It's 11 strikeouts for Atlanta pitching tonight. Home run cut by Echeverria who didn't get it. He knocked in the second Miami run back in the fourth inning. A little fly ball into shallow right. That'll be caught by Nick Markakis. And there's the second out. Cole Gillespie grabs a bat. He'll hit for Ramos. I like the way this has turned out. Braves have gotten Fernandez out of the game. Now they've gotten the Marlins closer out of the game. And Atlanta still has its ninth inning or final out man, this kind of available in the bullpen. And they've already used Osuna off the bench. Gillespie has two hits and eight at bats against Atlanta pitching this year. He has struck out three times in those eight at bats. And he's two for 16 in a pinch. Ball one strike. And the air to center right at NCRT. And Withrow, another terrific innings worth of work. An inning in two thirds to be exact tonight. We have free baseball in Miami. 2 2 is your score. Chase Darno will lead off when we come back.
Wings are presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Quiet night on South Beach so far tonight, but then again, it's early. It's only 10 o'clock. We have 10th inning baseball coming away from inside Marlins Park. Chip and Joe with you. It's a 2-2 game. And you see the extra inning records. Braves are four and seven. Miami one and three. And it'll be Kyle Baraclaw coming on to pitch next. Three and one, a 289 ERA. All of his work out of the bullpen. 21 walks in 28 innings. That is significant. Even though you see 50 strikeouts to go with that. Not many hits, but a lot of base runners thanks to all the walks. Over 16 strikeouts per nine innings is the rate for Kyle Baraclaw. That's most among National League relievers and third in the major leagues, trailing Dylan Patances and Andrew Miller of the Yankees. They got him from the Cardinals for Steve Ciszek. And up and in. Say hello to Chase Darno. Upper 90s fastball on the slider. That certainly will get your attention. That's low. So here we go. Three balls, no strikes. Say this about Bearclaw, he's had a lot of experience with runners in scoring position, but with that big fastball, he's been able to pitch out of trouble almost every time. See if Chase makes him throw another strike. He did. And he did. Six. Smart baseball on the part of Darno. Still got one left. A lead off walk. Let's see if Atlanta can cash it in. Bonifacio is coming up. Jeff Francoeur has grabbed a bat. And Paul Porter is looking at Darno at first and at Bonifacio in the box. Let's see how the Braves play it with a man at first and nobody out. Johnson was creeping in very quickly at first base. Bonifacio showed no sign of a bunt. Let's see how aggressively Chris comes in. As Darno leads at first. He's bunting. And it's down the third base line, and it's a beauty. Throw to first and just in time. Bonifacio almost beat that out. Great job. What a night for him. Coming back. Base hit. He was on board for the home run that tied the game by Peterson, and now a very good bunt. Real Muto looked down at second base like he wanted to see if he had a play, and he almost wasted too much time. So it's Fran Coor versus Baraclaw. Jeff three for 15 in a pinch hitting assignment and batting 272 for the year. Good speed at second, good arms in the Marlins outfield. And the pitch is strike. 
Brad Coor one for one against him. Braves have no left hand hitters on their bench tonight. Loaded up the lineup with lefties against Fernandez. That's ripped into the seats foul. It's nothing in two. Slider got Fran Quarter swing and miss. And two are out. And here is that long stretch of lefties for Atlanta. The man that's had the big night, Jace Peterson's up again. Again, a game tying two run homer in the eighth. After the Braves only had one hit going into that inning. Muto out to talk about it with two men out and Don Mattingly is going to join the conversation. That's buying a little more time for the Marlins bullpen which has Mike Dunn up and throwing and I think the call is going to be made. So here's that stretch of five straight left hand hitters for Atlanta. Paraclaw gets the ball into the hands of Mike Dunn but the go ahead run at second base with two outs in the tent. We'll see how it works out when we come back to Miami. Beautiful city of Miami, the magic city, they call it. And we've had a great night at Marlins Park. Braves 2, Marlins 2. Atlanta trying to go to 6 and 1 against the Fish here in 2016. And they'll face a former Brave, Mike Dunn, the lone lefty available for Don Mattingly out of the Marlins bullpen. Came off the disabled list at the end of May. First time he'd ever been on the DL with a strained forearm. So this is only his 10th game, but left handers hitting him at a 308 clip, 4 for 13. And a hot hitter up there. The ball in the dirt. And that's going to chase Darno if you'll pardon the pun to third base. One more of those, and the Braves might take a lead. Well, it sure changes things around defensively. Can't afford a bobble or a mistake of any kind. Fastball slider for Dunn. Fastball in the low 90s. That slider gripped a little too tight. Know this until I read it, but Mike Dunn is the Marlins' all time leader in relief wins. He's had a fine career since coming over in the deal that sent Dan Ugla to the Braves. Good cut, foul back, two balls and a strike. He's been good, he's been durable. You mentioned the forearm problem, that's the only time he's been on the disabled list in the big leagues. Working on four consecutive scoreless appearances. Fly 
line drive, base hit, Jace Peterson pumping that right fist as he brings home the go-ahead run. What a night for Jace Peterson. He's knocked in all three Atlanta runs. And he does it against a left-hander, and they continue to give Mike Dunn fits. Had a good hack at a high fastball 2 and 0. Oh. He gets another one and laces it to left. Great job, and the wild pitch certainly comes back to help out too. And now the Marlins will have him picked off with a good throw, and it is a good throw. And that will send us to the bottom of the 10th inning. Jace Peterson has hit a two run homer. He's hit a 10th inning single to score Chase Darno. And Atlanta looks to seal the deal at the bottom of the 10th next. Peterson with a big three RBI night. Hopefully we'll have a six game winning streak to talk about with you tomorrow. A quick turnaround a day game as we wrap up the series here in Miami Braves live kicks off our coverage at 1130 Eastern Joe and I will have the play by play for you beginning at 1210 on Fox Sports Southeast and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Herodis Vizcaino has seven saves but his last one came June 8th at San Diego. In between, he's picked up a loss in some games where they, he was in some no save situations, including one in New York. But he's got a save situation here and get that first guy who's not always easy. And that first guy is the always pesky Mr. Suzuki. A single, a walk, and four trips to the plate tonight. Atlanta three, Miami two. <laughs> Biggest decision of the night for Don Mattingly was keep Fernandez in the game or take him out. He took him out after seven innings of one hit scoreless ball. A totally understandable decision considering how well the Marlins bullpen had pitched. David Phelps came on in the eighth inning, gave up a leadoff hit. A strikeout, and then Jace Peterson hit a two run homer to tie it. Ichiro slaps it to short. Ibar charges, has to throw on the run, and Ichiro rakes out an infield hit. That is a textbook example of how Ichiro Suzuki made his way to. 3,000 in. No, ch no chance. You got no chance when he's already running out of the box and swinging. See how he was leaning and already crossing over with that back foot? Slap it and go. But as you said, Joel, this Marlins club, for all the good things they've done offensively, they hit into a lot of double plays. 
Martin Prado makes a ton of contact. As a result, he's hitting to nine twin killings. That is tied for most on their club with Christian Yelich, who's waiting on deck. And one tonight. the fifth Atlanta reliever tonight. Marlins have gone four deep with their relief core. Not close. Three balls, no strikes. Gaiano had that outing against Cincinnati where he took a loss where he walked three batters in his inning of work and he walked one in his last time out against the Mets. And he just walked Prado. Winning run at first. Yelich coming up. Two on. Nobody out. An infield hit and a base on ball. And then were I Brian Snitker I would not hesitate to get my bullpen going because we've seen Viscaino have problems from the get go like this before. Waves have Jim Johnson and Tyrell Jenkins left from the right side. They've got Ian Kroll from the left side available in relief. Here's Yelich. Oh, for a ground ball at somebody here. Good call by AJ there. Breaking ball instead of a fastball. Throw something else. Take a little off. Get the strike. Get ahead. Yes, he did. 0 and 2. He's had some check swings already tonight, some funny swings on some sliders down and in. There's another one. with a, a shift on for him the left side huge hole I bar playing right real close to the bag you'll have to be the guy that takes a ground ball double play type turn in second even from third base trying three at the knees Yelich took it one out wow a is, three strikeout night for him yeah Three strikeouts from a guy that's hitting 340 for the month of June. And where's the Braves out? Took a fastball right there. So here's Giancarlo Stanton. With the face mask, face bar back on with a right handed pitcher. For a strike, this kind of muscled up that one at a hundred miles an hour. Stanton's only faced him one time, 0 for 1. This is 
Suzuki at second, Prado at first, both with huge leads. The pitch is well outside. Can't even count. Set up, took a little off. So you have a lot of options with Stanton. You go up the ladder, do you throw him a slider off the plate? Get him to chase. Last night he struck out on a good fastball away. He was late on it. It was the breaking ball and Stanton strikes out again. Two outs. Blue Birds. Boy, was that a perfectly placed pitch? Started up, finished in the dirt. Nice block by AJ and got him to chase. That had a lot of tilt to it. And the final hope for the Marlins is Chris Johnson. Two on, two out. Chris likes the ball away. He likes it middle of the plate away. If you throw him in, if you pitch him in, you've got to throw it in tight on his belt. You throw it down and in, he'll drop the barrel on it and turn on it. We saw that a lot when he was with the Braves. Christian Darno guarding the line at third base. No balls at a strike. Man, oh man, that's been his best pitch. Yeah. And the Braves are a strike away. Just a flat out slow curveball. So Johnson in a deep hole. No balls, two strikes. He struck him out, and the Braves hold on and beat Miami in 10. What a comeback. Woo. For the team and for Viscaino. Atlanta's win streak is now six games. The Braves were shut out on one hit through seven, but Jace Peterson tied it with a two run homer and put the Braves in front with an RBI hit off Mike Dunn. And Vizcaino with two on, nobody out, struck out the next three Marlins hitters, and Atlanta has beaten Miami again. 3 2 is your final four from Marlins Park right after this.